Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Dodgeball Podcast. In this episode, I get a chance to uh, learn more and uh, potentially hype up this coming weekend's eighth annual Bells of the Ball um, All Women's Dodgeball Tournament. And here to help me do so is Sum Sum Chan. Sum Sum, thank you so much for for hopping on and, and being willing to kind of um, discuss this this tournament with me. Thanks for having me. Um, real quick, before we get into the actual tournament, um, I just kind of wanted like a, a chance to kind of uh, get to know you just a little bit more. Because as we were talking offline, um, I've, I mean, I've known of you for for quite some time now, and um, I just kind of want to ask, how long have you been playing dodgeball? We'll start there. Oh, well, I've been playing dodgeball about thirteen years. It's been a long time. Yep. Um, you might actually have me beat. So, I mean, you were <laughs> you're part of like. It was LA Dodgeball Society at the time. Is yeah, that what to say? I started playing before there was a dodgeball league or a game. It was just drop in, pick up dodgeball in the Hollywood area, and uh, I don't think it even had really a name. I had, I think it had like a casual name of Los Angeles Dodgeball Society, but it wasn't really a league at the time. So it was simply Los Angeles Dodgeball. It made a lot of sense, and we all got together and had a couple of days uh, where we would come together and play and it wasn't even this it wasn't always the same time either um sometimes we'll pick another day of the week and then over time we became a much more cohesive group uh, and uh, yeah and some people are still left <laughs> there's still some people around yeah so you're, you're i mean the only names that, that come to mind now are like michael costanza um eric ade uh, obviously uh, dave benedetto um do those names I mean you, you yeah yeah we played with uh, I started playing with them uh, Bread Truck um, Bread Truck yep. of, of course, course. Um, and there was yeah there were definitely a, a large group of us um, at, I still see some people around um, Seabass I think everybody had a nickname nope I never really knew what purple people's last name or first name was it was their, always their nickname um, so we you know, played we would travel around and play sometimes uh and then over time we kind of became a more cohesive unit gotcha and that's as I, is that what eventually formed la dodgeball society which eventually would become world dodgeball society and yes um la oh. los angeles dodgeball society was perfect for when we had one location and we played in los angeles and then when we started moving around our second location um was uh, you know, on the west side, which didn't really make as much sense. Um, and then as we expanded, the cities weren't, were no longer Los Angeles. So it, uh, it became um, the World Dodgeball Society. And we played outside of the city and, and people came to know that better. Awesome. Yeah, that, that's funny. We, we, we just had like this OG panel, like group chat uh, that we recorded last night with uh, Mark, Mark Acom and um, Surge and you know, just people have been playing for at least you know double digits um, dodgeball wise and, and we were pointing back to those good old days um, some of the LA dodgeball society tournaments um, stuff like kind of pre and during NDL so um, I oh yes I'm really <laughs> fighting to like not go into those uh, rabbit holes with you but I, I definitely want to talk to you maybe at a different time we can kind of dig into that more but um, sure. just in this, for the sake of staying on topic so uh, bells of the ball can you kind of break down what that um, I mean this is obviously fast forward and a lot of of the history between LA, um, LADS and, and Worlds, but um, how did that come to be? And this is the eighth annual, right? This is the eighth annual. So, so actually, this is an interesting story. Um, the real, real, real backstory behind Bells of the Ball was that uh, I had a lot of people, and I see this every tournament, I had a lot of people tell me that women really needed a platform to play dodgeball. And at the time, there were, there were a limited amount of women that were playing dodgeball, and we played where the men played and we really had to practice twice as hard um, because it's always sometimes it's hard to get the balls. I know it's out, out there. Uh, we didn't always get great practice time um, or the role on our, on the court, our roles on the court were sometimes minimized. So I was really getting pushed by a lot of women to provide a platform for women. And being a very large dodgeball community in Los Angeles, uh, we started off with a mini tournament and a skills training. So we did the skills training, then we did a mini tournament, and the influx of women that came, that brought their friends and friends of friends to this event made me realize, wow, there's actually people that are going to participate in this event. Um, not only that is the first Bells uh, was the precursor to our Women's League. 
I wasn't confident that we would have enough women that would be interested in playing in an all women's league or even had enough people that would be able to fill a women's league. And from there, after the first year, it supported each other. The uh, Bells grew, um, the women's league grew, and in turn, obviously, as a whole, the women's community grew quite a bit. So you, you said uh, eight years, so that was 2010, um, and it, was, it wasn't like an official, uh, like a Bells branded thing, or when did the, the brand come to be? Well, we, we kind of called it Bells, mainly just because we couldn't think of anything else, and it was cute. Uh, but it wasn't, we didn't, we didn't create a quote unquote brand until I think the second year and we needed to call it something. Uh, and people really were drawn to it. They really were very excited to be a part of it. Um, there is a, you know, it's been, it's been eight official years. Um, we have certainly done a lot uh, of training since then. So over, we may call it like, a, I think we had called it Bell's Practice or Bell's mini mini tournament or getting ready for Bell's, but uh, we needed to call it something. And then Bell's seemed like a perfect name for for a, an event that we had different affiliations with in terms of fundraising. So we didn't want to attach a necessarily um, a fundraising name to it either. Gotcha. Uh, earlier, you said that people were, were approaching you. Um, were you like kind of like a league organizer or did you have some authority or like why were they, um, why did it come well, to you if you don't mind I asking? Was, I was helping out with Wall Dodgeball Society and I was helping run a couple of the leagues and as an administrator, but mainly because I had been playing for so long um, and I was a prominent woman that was in an organizational role as well. And they were hoping that that would provide um, easy traction uh, to getting what they wanted. To be honest, I wasn't as confident as they were that it was right. going to work. Uh, and I had a lot of doubts. Um, pre pretty much I thought, oh, that's, this is kind of a, <laughs> not that it's a dumb idea, but I thought it was a wonderful idea. I was, I was just thinking, well, I'm not sure if there's enough women out there, but they proved me wrong. Yeah, I'll, I mean, I'll say, and then it's one of those, like, if you build it, they will come type of... Yeah, exactly. I, I, I was hoping, like, in my dreams, one day, <laughs> I hope I can have tons of women to play with, but I only know of a small handful, and everybody brought their women, and they brought their friends, and it became really big. Awesome. And it, so is this, like, every September or around yep. fall time frame? Yep, we always we always do it every September um, around the same time frame, either the anywhere from the 15th to the 20th. 24th awesome. weekend and we always do it for two days um it's in the los angeles area uh in the last couple of years it's been a little bit further outside of los angeles but we try to keep it within that realm it's always the same format um the for the style and format we always do a saturday round robin and a sunday double elimination the okay. teams are teams of 10. Uh, in the past, we have, we've have we said just teams of 10, that, that's it. In the last couple of years, we've changed it so that you can have a roster of 11. Um, in addition to that, we really wanted to be able to uh, give people as much playing time as possible. So we really maximize playing time the first day. It's a rel relatively long tournament. You play um, when possible all the years that we've had it, we play all the teams. And the goal is to meet as many teams as, as we're allowed um, for that time frame. Um, and a huge part of this, uh, since it's Bells, is the fundraising aspect. You know, it is for charity. Um, we do raise money. We do provide donations. Um, the first few years, we worked with homeless women who were entering into the workforce and doing career training um, in the women the players would provide bags of donations of their work clothes, work bags, nice. work shoes. And now we've uh, focused our charity at the Downtown Women's Center. And part of that is bringing in napkins, feminine products, um, everyday living products that they don't have available in their shelters. Um, and that actually all contributes directly back to our charity. Has, has uh, the charitable cause always been associated with Bells from the beginning? Yes, from the very, very beginning. We've always had a charitable, charitable cause, and it's always been a women-focused cause. Awesome. So the organization may have not necessarily been only focused on women, 
but they have a women's division and whatever we raise to benefit goes towards the women's programming. So for instance, um, last year and this year, it's the downtown, the women's center and they provide specifically women shelter for women that qualify. If they are outreaching to people on the streets, we are specifically providing feminine napkins and tampons, um, blankets. Um, if they are available, a- able to get into the shelter, we're also uh, providing them pots and pans, cleaning supplies, um, linens. So it is very much uh, a fundraiser for donations and a fundraiser for that charity. And, and it goes beyond uh, financial donations as well. Though. Yes, yes. And a lot of these, so financial is wonderful. We have a financial aspect. Um, anything that we we ask for donations, we sell t-shirts, uh, the um, the actual fees um, outside obviously of, of the operational cost goes directly back to the charity. But a lot of times they don't necessarily have the person to be able to field getting all these supplies at a really great rate. Um, so asking for slightly used pots and pans or um, jackets for the winter, sleeping bags, linens. That's something that the minute I give it to them, it's absolutely wonderful. Last year I gave, brought in a truckload and the minute I walked in the door, I was swarmed by women who really needed it. So the minute it enters into the door, they're able to use it. Uh, and that's, that's huge for, especially like last winter, um, there was a lot of rain, um, and I think they just didn't have the supplies that they needed. Gotcha, man. So that's that's, that's like double the um, the contribution. Like on one hand, you're you're giving all these uh, women players a platform to play, and and it, their their tournament specifically for them. But at the same time, you're also doing this amazing charitable thing as well. So that's that's really cool. It's got like a twofold uh, benefit to it. Yeah, we're really excited about that portion of it. Um, so what, what it ha- actually how it happens is that the, the players get a little bit more of a benefit is we go out to sponsors, we get prizes. Um, in order to get a raffle ticket to be considered uh, to win one of those prizes or uh, one of the sponsor prizes, they would then bring in bags of the essentials that we need. So for instance, if, a, if we were giving away a package of balls um somebody would bring in uh coats and jackets and toiletries and for every bag that they bring in they get a chance to participate in the raffle nice yeah so it's all it's it's great for the players they get something in return um and it all just really goes back to the charity so multiple people uh parties get wins. Yeah, <laughs> we like it yep that's awesome <laughs> Um, I kind of want to go back into uh, the teams. Um, so you said teams of 10 this year, it's going to be 11, so they can have a yep. sub. Um, how are teams formed? Do you just round up, round up nine other people, or is it preset, or how does that work? Um, well, like any of the tournaments that we play in, whether it's um, elite or whether it's just a regional tournament, a lot of these teams are already preformed. Okay. Most of the teams know that Bells is a 10 person roster or 10 to 11 person roster. So they will work to have their expanded team. Some of the tournaments that we play in are uh, typically six to six to eight players. So they will know to pick up um, additional players for specifically Bells. And that is done year to year. Well, since we have a league and we have a no, no Boys Allowed Facebook group and page. It's pretty active. Um, a lot of people do know how to connect with other players, whether they're if they're traveling in, they can jump on a team. And uh, we've had definitely teams come from all over the United States and, and play as well. That's awesome. So going back to like that first tournament, did you ever, did you like foresee people flying in from other states to, to, to go to this thing and have it become the level of, 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 I guess, like premier or have the pool that it has now? Well, the the goal of Bells is it, I want to make it accessible to a lot of people. We have such a, a, a great group of people in Los Angeles. Um, we have people coming in from San, you know, we always have people coming in from San Francisco and Pacific Northwest and Arizona, obviously. Uh, but I, I I really want to make sure that Bells is 
for everyone. Um, if you want to put together a team, you're going to have, you can grab a group of girls um, in the local area and you can join and you're obviously welcome to do so. Uh, because it is a charity tournament, um, there really isn't anything that we require to for anyone to participate or for a team to participate. Right. Very cool. And then um, kind of talked about like the style. You said it's um, round robin, two days, and then double elimination. Mm -hmm. Is it best like two out of three or is it time matches? Like how do those work out? Uh, for the elimination, um, it, it, we've changed it year, uh, kind of year to year on the elimination style. Um, typically it's best two out of three and uh, with kind of a time cap so we don't run too much over. Uh, and if you, if we do run over, I think we put, we, we bring in there's a, if there's a, obviously if there's a, a time issue, then we bring in caveats this year. We shouldn't have that issue. So it should just be best two out of three and then double elimination. So you'll come back through. Gotcha. Um, caveats like no blocking or. Um, like we had done that in the past. I don't think we'll be doing it this year. It'll be just be standard. We have plenty of time <laughs> this year. Gotcha. Very cool. And then what, uh, what kind of ball do you guys use? Um, our stay puff balls are uh, soft, soft rubber balls. Stay puffed. Yeah. Speaking of the good old days. Um, what are they? Yeah, sorry. What do they people? What do they call that now? Uh, I, I think they're just no sting. Um, yeah. So no sting, no sting stay puff stay balls. Puffed. I think it's the old style. So we've always just, I've always just called it stay puff balls because we didn't have anything else to call it. Yeah, I'm, I'm just laughing because I remember like because I would go on your guys' website all the time even though, you know, we lived in, uh, I lived in Tucson, Arizona at the time and I would mm -hmm. see like the Charles Bronson League was like the 8.5 rubber and they had like the stay puff marshmallow <laughs> man. <laughs> yeah, so it was I was I just had that image of that, that awesome marshmallow guy. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. Some of those old shirts. I do love those. Oh, they're, yeah, those are some good times. Um, well, very cool. And I was going to ask also, um, is there anything different this year versus last year? You kind of said that you should have more time, um, but any like rule changes other than like the 11 person roster now? No, we make it, we try to make it, uh, we, we try to not make any changes from year to year. Um, so people know what to, what to expect. I feel like for our all tournaments, consistency is key. At least I also, so as the organizer, I there isn't any unknowns. People know how to do the routine. Actually, it's really great because it can help us uh, players really help us out on the moving, moving the tournament as quickly as possible. Since this is the second time we've done it at this location, um, we were able to best spec out how last year went. Uh, so we just know that we have booked more time this year and gotcha. we should have no problem. My goal for every tournament that I am a runner and participating in, I just want to make sure that we are as close to being on time or ahead of schedule as possible. People have places to go and things to do and parties to go to afterwards. Oh yeah, there's always somewhere to be. Um, do you know how many teams are, are you expecting for this one? Um, I think we have, uh, we possibly have 14, we for sure have 12. So we've wow. jumped between 12 and 15, 16 in the last few years. Oh my goodness, so like over 120 women players, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Math, wow. Who'd have thought, huh, um, eight years ago? Yeah. Um, that's, that's awesome. Um, well, we started out for the first three years, we had uh, six to eight teams. So it's already like taking off from the, from the beginning, yeah. as you were saying. Very cool. Are there any, um, I want to say like dominant teams to look forward to, but any teams that are like, oh yeah, these guys won last year, or you know, kind of like how you have like Invasion, Pop That, Money Shot? Um, um, they're all great. All those that you just mentioned are absolutely wonderful. Uh, from what I've heard, there's going to be changes in team makeup. I know last year, some of the people that were playing in Worlds changed it up so they could have some team practice time. I, That's cool. I don't know the answer to that. I'm eagerly anticipating the showdown. Awesome. Um, showdown is in like, is there... Top four. I, I want to see what the uh, top oh, gotcha. four is always up for grabs. That's gonna be exciting. I have my money on um, Rosé and Slay, and I, you know, I might have to double check to make sure I didn't just air that out. Um, thankfully, this is delayed, but uh, it's an Arizona team. So I'm, I'm obviously I'm biased, so <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna be rooting for them. Um, <laughs> so if, if you're hearing a beep, then you'll find out, I guess, tomorrow, depending on when this is released. Um, <laughs> 
that's yeah, it's gonna be fun. I'm, I'm looking forward to to watching. Um, is there anything that you're looking forward to the most uh, for this this particular um, event? Um, not an event, the eighth one, I guess. I, I really love the upsets, even in, in round robin, because there's always teams of people that pick up great players that are unknown, and especially in round robin, they'll take a couple of games away from top four teams easily. And those are super fun to see. And it really encourages the women to be better and it gives them some excitement. And um, you can start to see who are going to be the big players for the upcoming years. Awesome. So it's kind of like a, maybe like a scouting opportunity, like, oh, this person's going to go yeah. places and be picked up. Yeah, by everybody it. has to have an opportunity to get their feet wet and play with the best players. Um, I feel like Bells is one of those opportunities. Awesome. I did think of one question. How is this officiated? Uh, do the teams have to supply their own refs? Or do no, you have... no. We have our own refs that oh, are nice. dedicated for the tournament. That's cool. And the requirement is that you have to be okay with giving a card to a girl that's yelling at you. <laughs> Does that happen? Uh, did, no, it doesn't happen. Did, oh. <laughs> I was going to ask you. So it's like, it rarely ever happens. People are wonderful. We've had to warn some people, but you know, no, they're absolutely great. All the players have been um, really great over the years, and you know, things get heated, but they know, you know. They take a minute. And they know that hey, this is, this is a fun tournament. It's a charity tournament. It's all women. We need to. I'll get it back together. Yeah, don't don't get up in somebody's face and make a big scene. Yeah. This is for fun. <laughs> well, that's good. Um, well, very cool. I, I think that's all I have um, just for like a preliminary, just kind of help me understand the term a little bit more. Um, as I said, I've, I've always seen it pop up on uh, Facebook with clips, and I think I saw a really awesome uh, like Sports Center um, highlight um, mm -hmm. where I think Allie double caught, and I was like, that's awesome. Like, this is on like a major TV show and on Keith Olbermann, who I used to really follow a lot. So definitely know it's going to be a pretty awesome event. Just, just talking about it. But, um, I think, uh, I think we'll just leave it at that. Cause there, there's so many rabbit holes I want to go into just from the past, especially with <laughs> another your, time. Yeah, definitely another time, but, um, we'll go ahead and end the interview there. All right, so I was actually able to get a hold of uh, Brenda Kramer to kind of give us like her experience with with Bells. So in this segment, uh, we're just going to talk about um, her perspective just a little bit. So uh, Brenda, thank you so much for for hopping on and, and joining. Yeah, thank you for having me. Awesome. Um, do you want to go ahead and just give like a, a real quick introduction? Um, who you are? Um, who? What teams you play for? What you're known for? Sure. Uh, I play on Money Shot, and uh, I've been playing on Money Shot since its inception about three years ago. Um, I also played on Loft, which is a UDC team that we formed this year. Um, I don't know if people watch that, but yeah, those are my two main teams that I play for right now. Nice. Yeah. So is, is Loft going to stick around for, for next year? Because I thought, um, well, I want to say like they're throwing together teams, but they're, it was like a new, it was a new division, right? It's the first time UDC did that. So yeah like hopefully i mean we had an amazing time and we all kind of clicked really fast and all those teams those women's teams that formed were uh incredibly competitive so hopefully those same teams stick together because i think anyone could have taken it uh this year so yeah i'm hopeful awesome yeah it's really exciting seeing some of the clips from that and um i'm, I'm sure as you know watching um angelique just just going ham on people during that last match that was incredible just watching all the excitement so it's 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 awesome here that um Luff might return next year and we'll see that continue to grow and develop but um how long have you been playing dodgeball um total um a total almost four years i started out it's actually funny because uh jake and i were just talking about this i started out subbing in a weho league a friend of mine uh, was playing and just needed a girl sub for her team and I'd never played before uh, but we both went to the same gym and she knew that I was athletic so she just asked me to sub and I kind of fell in love with it um, and just subbed for you know a season or two uh, until um, one of the WeHo teams asked me to play with them uh, in a, a Thursday night league and it's actually the first team I played on was with uh, Cliff Ferry. Well, so we both we both kind of got our start 
uh, in the WeHo League, and now he's kind of made a name for himself in 8.5. Um, so we, we joke around about that a lot. And then, uh, then I started playing women's um, about three years ago. Uh, there's a, a women's league out in LA where we play no sting and um, a friend of mine from the WeHo league recommended that I play. So I showed up to an open gym and actually that's where I met Heidi Chambers, who's on uh, money shot. And it's, I actually hadn't met most of the girls that are on money shot uh, when it formed, but Heidi saw me playing and recommended to Brianna and Sybil who formed the team that they pick me up because I was relatively unknown. Hmm. Um, yeah, so it's, it's kind of like a, a back way of, of finding my way into elite. Um, so yeah, I didn't know anybody and then, and then Heidi recommended me and, and now here we are. <laughs> that's awesome. So you're, you're kind of scouted more or less. Um, is that, that's how it came to be? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, that's really cool. So four years total, um, and I, I put competitive, but basically like elite type tournaments for about three years. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, about three years. Very cool. And I, it's funny because earlier I, I prefaced the question with like, "What are you known for?" And like right now, it's that double catch. I think is is making its <laughs> way. Um, do you want to kind of talk about that a little bit? I know we talked about it a little bit offline, but um, yeah. did you uh, did you see it happen so, or like kind of? You know, it's just one of those things. You never can plan anything like that to happen. But yeah, a couple of weeks earlier, Nina Fiore and I had been chatting. You know, she's known for catching and she's amazing at it. But I think I had mentioned to her like, oh, you know, never had a double catch. I, I really would like to know what it feels like. Um, and I think it was just, you know, right place, right time. I kind of timed my jump to... Uh, to Bev and Ryan's throws because I know that they both have great arms, very accurate. So I kind of had a feeling that they were going to throw at me. Um, and so I, I, I know they tend to throw high sometimes as well. So I just kind of timed it uh, to their pump fake and just, you know, kind of got my arms where they needed to be. You know, watching the video back a little bit, I can see where you know, I kind of trap one with my left hand and then the right one kind of bounces, but I catch it with my right hand. So it was kind of cool. Um, and I don't know if I'll ever be able to, to do that again, but I am just very thankful that Dominic was there to catch it on film. Cause you know, if it wasn't on film, it didn't happen. Exactly. But, yeah. So yeah, I'm pretty, pretty happy that I'll be able to look back at that. Um, you know, when my career is, is is winding down i can always say well i had that double catch at nationals so <laughs> check this out um yeah that was sick. i like how you kind of broke that down because there's some people that will just they'll trap the balls and you know they're they're just as shocked as everybody else that they caught too but um you had to struggle for yours kind of like you like you said you had to like trap it again with your right hand so it was, it was very deliberate looking and then yeah you know and i i freaked out like in a very good way afterwards yep. i kind of like <laughs> started screaming and you can see in the video like Sybil comes behind me and gives me like a really big hug and then we realize oh wait the game's still going still on so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think wasn't uh was Brianna the one like her expression was just as great too because she's all yes or she I forgot what she said uh, or maybe it's maybe it's Sybil you know I don't know I actually afterwards I don't know if she actually knew what happened I think she just thought like oh like a really nice catch happened and then um, Heidi and I kind of told her we we're like no I, I caught both at the same time and and then she's like oh my god that's crazy <laughs> but like I, I you know nationals for for us was an amazing experience this year I think like we just clicked even more as a team and we just continue to do so like every time we play together um, so yeah it was it was a really cool moment for sure yeah, I was looking at the uh, the brackies. I'm, I'm gonna be recapping uh, women's with uh, with Amanda and Amanda, <laughs> uh, Amanda <laughs> and uh, Emily Hotz. Um, I think tomorrow, if I get yes. a chance. Um, but I was just like kind of just reviewing everything, and um, you guys look like your your bracket was pretty uh, pretty tough, and you just like went a very long way. Um, and it was um, you guys took second, right? We did, yes. Oh, there it is. So yeah, I was just like looking at that. Um, 
do you have any any comments on that because i kind of want to get into that a little bit i know we're supposed to talk about bells but i can't help myself um <laughs> since i have you on here um do, do you remember what that match was like and um can you kind of just like walk me through that a little bit I could tell you about all the matches that day. Uh, we came out, we played against Ride or Die, who has just been improving every single tournament this year. Every elite tournament, they come out and they get better. Um, so we knew it was going to be tough. I think we either placed eighth or ninth going into the day. So we knew it wasn't going to be easy. But um, like I said, Brianna and Heidi are two of the best leaders out there um you know Heidi can kind of seem like a silent assassin a little bit but she gives the best advice and and Brianna is also incredibly a, just as a dodgeball genius huh. um as as is pretty much everyone on this team but you know we kind of we feed really well off each other and we try to stay super positive so you know when we when we lost that first game in double elimination to uh to ride or die we knew okay well we've been here before we've been in the losers bracket or we like to call it the comeback bracket and you know it's just win or go home and uh we were able to kind of build off of momentum in every single game that we were playing um, everyone just kind of stepped up after that first loss. Um, you know, Katie Walker was making catches off her face. And, you know, V had a couple great just snipes and kills. And Helen was super clutch. It was like everyone kind of decided, you know what? Like, yeah, we are the uh, defending national champions. And and we haven't performed as well as we had liked to over the elite season. Um you know some injuries occurred and just some you know these teams are getting unreal these women's teams so you know nothing comes easy um in, and then i think once we we beat a couple teams um in nationals this year and then we ended up having to face witness i believe before we played fuego mm -hmm. And uh, we ended up taking the game off or two games off witness. And, you know, they had given us some trouble in the elite season. You know, we'd lost to them in the first round uh, in LA. We lost to them and ended up getting fourth place um, in that first round. And, and just every time we played them, it was a battle. You know, those girls are great, really nice arms and, and clutch plays and, so we kind of had to rely on just our our teamwork and our love for each other and knowing like you know my right corner has my back you know so helen or katie's gonna come in with a clutch catch which they always do um so we ended up beating witness and then we had to play fuego and that's when i got my double catch and and i think that kind of just ignited us uh, to when we had to play uh, pop that in the semifinals. And you know it was it was like a rematch kind of of last year where we had to play them in the finals and we're like you know we have the ability to beat them and we know we can and we play with those girls all the time in la as well so you know we all kind of know each other's uh tendencies and how each other works so you know any play can change the course of a game so it's just kind of going play by play and not worrying like if, if someone gets out or a bad play happens you kind of just go next play next play and that led us to the finals and you know invasion had been playing incredibly well that day they're just a great team katie sanchez was on my team in loft so i got a chance to play with her there and and just she's an amazing amazing catcher and arm and those girls just came together and, and they killed it so you know hats off to them and and every other girls team honestly it was not a single game was one that you could take off you know what i mean like we had to fight for everything and that's how it should be so that's what led us to our second place finish this year um so nothing to be you know bummed about just really happy about the way that it all played out for us definitely yeah that's incredible i mean getting knocked out um off the bat is probably not the most ideal way to start no, so, it's not great. It doesn't feel great. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I mean, you, whatever, um, whatever you guys said to each other, I mean, obviously it worked. I was looking at, um, and maybe correct me if I'm wrong because I can barely read this, but like 2-0 against Rose City. I want to say 2-0 against Venom. 
Yeah. Two O against money, uh, anarchy, I think. Yeah, and then I think is when we played witness. Yeah, two O against. So you guys like really, um, you guys really came together and and started um, firing up. Um, yeah. What uh, real quick. Um, do you have any examples of like what Brianna does, uh, what she brings to the team? Like you said that she's a dodgeball genius and you said that she's an amazing leader. Do you have like any examples of how she does that? For Just- sure. Um, without letting too much out, I mean, there was a time where I actually texted her and I was like, hey, you know, there's things that I want to work on, especially after it was one elite tournament and I, I just basically asked her like, can you watch film with me or watch film of me and tell me what you need me or want me to do? Um, to improve on a certain area and she just she was like yeah for sure next day she fired off like a bunch of texts to me like you need to do this you are doing great at this but you need to fix this part and so she just she really has a love and a knack for for the game and which you know it obviously shows she's one of if not the best women's dodgeball player right now um so it's just like kind of an honor to be able to share the court with her and everything she says means something it's she never just talks to hear herself talk she's got just you know so much knowledge and and that's the same with like anyone on this on on our team you know like we all have a different role um and it just kind of feels like magic a little bit when we are all kind of playing the way that we know how we can play so yeah she just She's like a leader. I don't know if you've ever played or anyone has played on like a, any other kind of team, not dodgeball, but like there's just that one person that you know, no matter what, like you go to them and, and they're either going to pull out a clutch play or they're going to have some kind of inspirational quote or inspirational something for you. And it's very personal and you can just kind of own that and feed off that. And that's kind of how Money Shot operates you know she's our leader for sure that's awesome yeah sounds like i'm gonna need to pick her brain a little bit so uh yeah, brianna if you're listening i'm gonna harass you soon <laughs> <laughs> for sure but uh yeah that's that's awesome and like i've been talking obviously to a lot of people and and just trying to uh i don't want to say deconstruct like their their nature but a lot of it just comes to cohesion and mm-hmm. chemistry and and just that faith in each other and that's that's what separates the rises from you know the not rises i want to like blast anybody but that's what makes a solid team and so um yeah that's 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 awesome um and to be careful because we might veer off into non-bells really stuff so <laughs> I mean, yeah. no we're gonna get back there we're definitely gonna get back there i know it <laughs> for sure um before we do that though um how was the the fundraiser yesterday just like a quick overall like uh it, can you kind of tell me about that it's like a four four and four Foam? Yeah, that- so it was a 4v4, um, two women, two men, um, form your own tournament or form your own team for the tournament. Um, you know, it's just one of those fun foam tournaments where, you know, any game can go any direction and it's just a lot of fun and you, you kind of get to like experience playing with players you've never played b- with before. Um, my team was uh, uh, Crystal Briones and Xander Simos and Brody Johnson, and oh, man. we played together before. Yeah, it's a fun. It's a fun group. Um, you know, th- those kids. I mean, I call them kids, but <laughs> like uh, Brody and Xander are just hysterical, and Brody does crazy things. He just jumps, and you feel like he's gonna, you know, touch the ceiling. It's how high he jumps. It's fun. Um, but yeah, the t- it was really it was really a good time. You know, Jake puts on a great puts on great tournaments whenever he throws them, and and I saw Mark there in the morning just helping setting up, uh, getting everything all situated, and you know, it's just a fundraiser, so it was it was cool. I think uh, the teams the team that ended up winning it had a uh, Glenn, Erica Schmidt, Lauren Hoffman, and. I'm blanking on who the final, final the other guy was. Um, I'll think of it. But yeah, they ended up they ended up winning that game, and I think Lauren uh, had a clutch catch um, in their first their first uh, the, the first game, um, and then I think uh, it was Ketchum's team they were playing against, and they ended up winning the second one, and then I think uh, in the third 
in final game, Erica and, and Lauren kind of um, closed it out. So, you know, it was fun. And then we had a 2v2 at the end. Um, I think Kiki and this guy Robbie ended up winning that. So it was just a fun day full of just foam and, and laughter and, and fun. Well, good. No, yeah. no heated moments or like... Um... No, no. Shouting matches. All. That's awesome. I, I think yeah. from what I've been hearing uh, with Elite, I think something like that is probably badly needed and need more, <laughs> more of those. So, yeah. Um, well, speaking yeah. of, um, so Bells, um, I found out yesterday talking to some, some that it's a, it's a charity tournament. I, I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. So um, I think this is like one of those other like have fun, feel good tournaments, but still fairly competitive. But uh, which, which Bells is this going to be for you? So this will be my third Bells. Um, last year I played with Money Shot plus some members of uh, Love Tap before Love Tap was created. Um, and this same, uh, this year we're, we're also playing with some members of Love Tap and we're calling ourselves I Love Money. Nice. So <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> who doesn't love money? Yeah, so this will be my third one. Very cool. And so three years ago so you started competing um what what was your impression of of it the first time Uh, the first time it was um you know just a so the the teams are composed of 10 women um so it's 10 on 10 and that's you know a little bit different a little bit of you know more people on the court playing against each other um you know a little bit more crowded but also more chances to catch ricochets and whatnot um but it's it's way different than elite you know some teams dress up which i also like super respect and i think is awesome when teams show up and they're all in costume and uh and i think they're you know more fun teams that are formed and it's just yeah it's a it's a charity tournament people um they bring things that they donate to i think women's shelters i'm not sure about what this year is but um, that's really just that's really the the focal point of this is just to bring things to donate um, and to have women come together and play dodgeball against each other. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like what you mentioned with the four b four four b four by four tournament yesterday. Yeah. It was like you have a chance to play with new people and you can mix teams and um, have that that fun element to it. So I'm imagining there's like no again no no meltdowns, nothing crazy going on during these events um, other than just hype, I'm sure, and excitement. Oh, of course. Yeah, that's exactly it. You know, it, it's not competitive in the way that like different elite tournaments are. Um, it is cool to to get to play with other people that you don't normally get to play with. Um, and I think that's that just what it's, it's what makes dodgeball fun anyway. Like you get you get to play with and learn from and, and pick the brains of of just so many other different dodgeball people um and that's why i love tournaments like bells that's awesome yeah. so what uh what, what would you say is your favorite thing about bells um if you can if you can pick one item or one aspect of it i would have to say just the turnout i think it's it's a chance for you know a lot of the women that play in uh the more rec leagues that are also very talented but might not play elite um you know they come they come out and and they kick butt man they really um they put on a show too so i like how how large the groups are and how how big the teams are and how it gives a chance uh for other women who don't necessarily play a lot of tournaments to get to experience that tournament life that we uh elite players are so accustomed to um yeah it's it's fun and and i also really like when the teams dress up and they commit to that i think it's awesome what uh what's been your favorite costume so far oh my god okay so my first year my first year there was a i can remember a a team that was dressed up like prince um so i'm I don't know if they all were, but there was just, there was a couple that were so committed to it, and you know you just like laugh on the other side of the court, and they and I think one girl had a mini piano, it was just and like one of the you know Prince guitars, 
So that was awesome. And then uh, last year, someone was dressed in a hot dog costume. Um, it, you know, it's just, it's, it's fun. It's just a fun experience. And it's another, it's a two day tournament um, where, you know, the first day is, uh, is just round robin. So you get to play against all those teams that dress up. And, uh, and then the second day is um, double elimination. So, you know, teams come a little bit more seriously on the second day, but the first day is just really fun. <laughs> the, the focus is fun. That's, that's yeah. awesome. And yeah. I've got when doves cry stuck in my head now and I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm not even that mad. No, it's, it should be stuck in your head more often than just now. Right. And I'll have to play it like once a week or so just, just to make sure it's there. Oh, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Um, well, I kind of want to ask this question still, but is, is there one thing specifically that you're looking forward to the most, uh, this weekend? Um, there's a couple things. I think anytime I get to play with money shot is the best. So I'm, I'm always looking forward to that. And, um, we're adding, um, Karina, Kiki, Crystal and Casey from love tap to, to our squad. So it should be pretty wow. competitive. Yeah. It should be fun. Uh, Sybil, unfortunately can't make it. So we just have us 10 riding deep. And then I think what I'm really looking forward to, I just love playing. I just, I simply just love playing dodgeball. So any chance I have to, to get out there on the court and, and, and have a good time. Like I, I just, I love it. That's awesome. Yeah. Just looking forward to the next day, the next game. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, it goes play by play. That's really what it is. Yep. I totally understand. I've been playing for a very long time, and it's just that just the promise of the next game, whether it's rec league, competitive league, tournament, open gym. Right. I'm always excited to be on that court. Um, man, I, I, there's so many other questions I want to ask, and I do want to get into into them. But I think, um, if you don't mind, we'll probably um, do that in a separate interview. That way, I can also get questions from other people as well, because I really like doing that too. So, I think um, in terms of bells, though, um, I think we're I think I've got enough now to. Uh, to at least have a, a pretty good preface for it and then definitely looking forward to, to connecting with you uh, during the tournament when, when we get a chance um, amidst all the madness but um, and recapping as well so um, yeah definitely I'll have to look out for best costumes this year as well oh yeah and I'm, I'm looking out for that too now I'm looking forward to it so <laughs> yeah for sure awesome we'll go ahead and end that segment there so that's a quick precap of the 8th Annual Bells of the Ball Tournament coming up this weekend in LA. And thank you so much to uh, Sum Sum and Brenda for hopping on and providing me some insight behind the tournament. And also just for dealing with me and, and coordinating a time when we can actually do this. Uh, it was a pretty crazy weekend for me, but I'm so glad you guys were very flexible and willing to do that. So um, thank you so much. Um, I am very much looking forward to seeing this tournament in person and just watching some great dodgeball competition and hopefully snagging some players throughout the tournament for some quick interviews that I can use as the uh, as part of the recap as well. So if you're interested in, in being interviewed, uh, feel free to let me know and um, I'll work with you to see how we can make that happen. And the more the merrier, so please don't be shy. For everyone that is uh, currently traveling to LA for the tournament, safe travels, good luck, and for everyone else, have a great rest of your weekend and we'll see you next time. I really want to sing When Doves Cry right now, but I'll wait until I get in my car to do that. Cause...